What is tritium? It is simply ordinary hydrogen which has become radioactive. And the reason it's become radioactive is because the nucleus has been changed. The nucleus of a hydrogen atom, as you know, is a single proton with an electron going around, of course. Um, heavy water, heavy hydrogen, is a, a neutron and a proton with an electron going around. That's why it's called heavy, heavy hydrogen, because it's heavier than normal hydrogen, twice as heavy, in fact. Tritium is three times as heavy because it's got two neutrons and it's radioactive with a 13-year half-life. Now, the trouble with tritium is, number one, because it's identical with ordinary hydrogen, it forms water molecules which are radioactive, which are exactly like ordinary water molecules. Where does water go? Every living thing. Is, we're mostly water, right? So uh, tritium is ubiquitous in the environment, particularly in living things, and there is absolutely no way that you can filter it out. You can't filter water from water. So you can't remove tritium from the drinking water by any technically available means that is affordable. They do have a tritium removal plant, but you can't afford that, believe me. And you wouldn't want it even if you, even if you could afford it. Uh, none of the municipal water treatment facilities, none of the Brita filters, nothing will filter this stuff out. Now the trouble is that when you breathe tritium vapor in, through the lungs, if you breathe a, a lung full of air that has tritium water vapor in it, the absorption through the lungs is, I kid you not, 100%. 100% of the tritium gets absorbed. I, I, I find that hard to believe, but that's, that's the figure that is given by industry sources. It also gets absorbed through the skin. It turns out that if you are in a tritium, let's suppose you have water vapor in the air, and you are breathing it in, well, as much goes into your body through the skin as goes in through the lungs. So the skin, it goes right through the skin. It's a very small atom, you know, a very small molecule, and it's very easily absorbed. In fact, our bodies are designed to absorb water pretty easily. Um, so this is a serious problem, because how much tritium do, does a candor reactor give off every year? Well, hold on to your seats. In Quebec, we have one reactor, Jean T2, it gives off approximately 100 trillion becquerels every year of tritium. Now, it gives off so much tritium, that 100 trillion becquerels is a lot. <laughs> now, when, when, uh, when, when it gives off so much tritium that the local drinking water in communities nearby, for example, across the river, have levels of tritium in their drinking water, which are elevated to the point where it would, be, it would be illegal in California. In California, they have a drinking water standard tritium of about 15 becquerels per liter. So they have in their drinking water about 20 becquerels per liter. It means that every time they drink the water, they're ingesting a known carcinogen, mutagen, and teratogen. Now, the one thing about tritium that, uh, and there's, there's fierce disagreements about whether it's dangerous or not. There's no doubt that it's dangerous. But there's debates about how dangerous it is. In the United Kingdom, a couple of years ago, three years ago, um, the British government appointed a committee called the CERI Committee, C-E-R-R-I-E. -R -R -E. It stands for the, the Committee on the Effects of Radiation Risks for Internal Emitters, CERI, C-E-R-R-I-E. They issued a main report and a number of subsidiary reports. One of the subsidiary reports was specifically on tritium, and it summarizes uh, the evidence that they reviewed, the experimental evidence and so on with animals and so on, uh, regarding tritium. And they say that there's no doubt that the, uh, that the risks of tritium are much greater than are currently thought, and possibly by a factor of at least uh, of, of 15 or so. So we're not talking about factors of thousands, but we're talking about factors of 15. That, however, only deals with fatal cancers. There are other risks associated with tritium which may, and I say may because the evidence is not really right there yet, but may be more serious because tritium is hydrogen. Hydrogen is one of the basic building blocks of every single organic molecule in your body. In fact, 50% of the atoms in your body are, are hydrogen. And tritium rapidly exchanges with uh, non-radioactive hydrogen in the body, including in DNA molecules. In fact, it has an affinity for DNA molecules. So tritium gets absorbed and incorporated right into very sensitive molecules. Uh, other substances don't do that. You don't get strontium absorbed into DNA molecules or cesium-137. So the, the result is that tritium goes everywhere in the body to all the organs, 
And uh, it may be causing damage of a much more subtle nature and a much more varied nature that is very, very difficult to measure. Because when you have a substance that goes to one gland, you can look at that gland and see, okay, how many thyroid disorders are there? Or if it goes to the bones, you can say, how many bone disorders are there? When it goes everywhere, what do you look for? Uh, there have been no good studies on, on what even to look for uh, with regard to tritium. But what I have done is I have compiled a dossier which is on our website, and I've also uh, helped to co-found a new group called the Tritium Awareness Project, which has its own website. And we are trying to make available information about tritium, because it really is a serious thing. 